Hello and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. If this is your first time, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to be notified the minute I have up new tutorials. Let's get started. Today I'm going to show you a very inexpensive alternative to a full-size wall banner, the 8.5 or 8 foot by 10 foot um, wall banners with the curtains. These I call character banners. They just attach to the wall. You could put them over your, you know, your decorated table. Just showing either uh, characters from your theme. You can make an oversized image or cutout of the person that the birthday party or the celebration is for. And this is something that you can just make at home. I make them usually anywhere from 20 inches to about 40 inches wide. And you can actually make these as large as you want. You just have to put them together um, as a puzzle. You print them using the print and cut feature. And I'll show you how to set it up today so that you can start making your own character or wall banners. This is an example of one that I made for a previous party. And as you can see, it's a pretty, pretty nice size. I currently only have printers that print eight and a half by 11. I haven't uh, taken the leap into the larger printers yet uh, because actually I can do whatever I need on the smaller ones. So why spend more money? So I want to show you how to do that today. This one, as you can see, because I put the ruler next to it so you can see just how large this is. Now this I made in it's three separate pieces. It's the Cheshire Cat. And then I made this signs totally separate and these balloons were just some uh, realistic balloon graphics that I found on the internet. Um, but I put them together to make an even larger wall post or character poster for the wall. And as you can see with the ruler, this is 12 inches, about 36 inches, 37 inches actually, I think was the final measurement uh, when I measured the the full height of it and then as you can see it's pretty wide as well so that covers a nice amount of space on the wall and looks really nice when it's posted today i'm working on one for paw patrol and i um this was the original uh design that i i set up but the birthday girl's favorite color is yellow so i decided that i would make one that was yellow instead and now I have my emblem fix that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to cut out this um, this gray edge because I just want the, to keep the yellow. So how I did that was I went to cut out in picture, cut out of picture by color selection, and then I just clicked on that gray edge so I can remove it and I'm going to hit next select opposite area so that I can keep this part of the picture and hit done. Now I'm going to delete everything on the bottom and now I have my new image and I'm going to save this as a PNG. So I'm going to go here to file save as. I'm going to click right here where it says picture at format. I'm going to click on it, scroll all the way down and you'll see portable network graphic. That's a PNG. I'm going to click that. It already has the name Paul Emblem. And I'm going to choose. I'm going to go ahead and put a P next to it so I'll know it's the newest one. And I'm going to change it and save it to my desktop. Hit save. And now when I go back into uh, Cricut, I'm going to upload this image. This is the one that I'm making for today. Um, but I want to swap out and change this as I've said so I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit and I'm going to cut out her head just in this area where I want to drop that emblem so I'm going to go to cut out in picture cut out of picture by color selection because I'm just doing a, a repair basically on this since I need to change out just that emblem so I'm just going to come right down along the side of her face. I 
and then once I get here I can just do anything because all I really want is this part left out so I'm just going to keep this portion of her face and a little bit of her body I'm going to click done so I'm going to zoom out now and I'm going to bring up that new emblem that I just made I'm going to click on, left click on it drag and drop it in my image And don't worry about the bone that's behind there because I'm going to fix that just by putting a, a white edge behind there so that it will cover up the part of the bone that I don't want. But first I want to just put, put this in position. All right. And now all I'm going to do is come here on the, the um, layers panel. I'm going to click on the second image, which is the cutout I made of her face, and drag it to the top. And just like that, I've corrected that area. And now I just want to cover this with a white, I'll use a white circle. So I'm going to go to Cutout in Picture, add a colored shape. I'm going to change it to a circle. I'm going to change the color to white, and I'm going to hit Done. Now I'm going to flatten this out some because I only want it to cover up that bone. I don't want it in any of these other areas. And then I'm going to drag that down two layers until it covers up that bone. So now the bone is gone. And I'm going to go to cut out a picture, cut out of picture by color selection. And I'm going to take that bone or the white area out again. Now you can see it's taken out part of her feet because uh, they're really light colored, but I'm gonna drop this down, hit reset, and try that again and see if I can leave out her feet. And looks like that's, that's looking better, but I need to do it. I'm gonna reset it one more time and I'm gonna take it all the way down to zero. Now when I take it all the way down to zero, it should just take out all of the white and as you could see, it took out all the white and it left her paws there. I don't have to do any extra cutting. So now when I hit select opposite area, it'll show me what I'm keeping. And I'm keeping everything that I want. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And now I'm going to delete everything that's underneath. So now all I'm left with is my puppy image and the new emblem. And now I can add a shadow to that if I want, but I think I'm going to leave it like it is. I don't think I want to add a shadow to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this as a PNG. I'm going to go to File, Save As, change this like I showed you just a few um, minutes ago. Click on the down arrow, scroll all the way down until I get to Portable Network Graphic. Click that. And now I'm going to give it a new name. I'll call it the Paul Wall. And I'm going to click Save. Make sure it's on the desktop in the directory I want it in. And now I'm ready to take it back into Cricut and print this out. Show you how to divide it and print it out. Okay, so now I'm using my iPad Pro because whenever I make the um, character banners or the wall banners I like to um, make it using the iPad Pro because it automatically lines up your pieces for you so that um, you know that you're cutting getting your cuts in the right places so I'm gonna go ahead and hit new project and then I'm gonna hit upload open uploaded images so that I can bring in the image that I just finished on my desktop in the room I'm going to shrink it down some so I can see it and I'm going to make my shape that I'll use to cut the pieces apart. It needs to be within the parameters of the print and cut of course. So I'm going to make a shape by clicking on, on shape and then click on the square. I'm going to unlock it then I'm going to click on edit so that I can change the width to 9.25 since this is on the horizontal plane is the widest area and then the height I'm going to make it 6.75 
so now I have my shape I'm gonna move my little puppy off to the side for now and I'm gonna make eight more of these so that I have a block or a, a rectangle of nine squares making a large rectangle so making sure once again that I'm inside of the parameters for the 9.25 by 6.75 which is the largest print and cut you can make and I'm going to click on or tap on actions I'm going to make two more shapes so that I have four then I'm just going to choose those and duplicate that makes eight and I just need one more all right so now I'm going to line these up and as you can see when I move these around you're seeing the orange lines show up on screen so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and first thing I'm going to do I'm going to line up all of my squares so I'm going to make three rows of three and you see how easy it 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 uh, lines itself up it just snaps right into space right into place I'm sorry so I'm just going to keep tapping one bring it up and put it right where it goes you have to if you slowly take it toward the the um, area and let it snap in there and then try not to move it with your finger you should be good so I'm going to do this to line up all of them shouldn't be any white area showing when I'm done between those pieces and looks like everything is aligned correctly now I'm going to tap on my little image of the the pound puppy I'm sorry of Paw Patrol puppy and I'm going to choose edit arrange send to front and now I'm going to tap on that image and bring it over and it also is snapping to the lines but I want it to be a little smaller so I want to make sure I lock it up so I won't change the proportion because I want to keep the proportion correct and I'm just going to drag out until I make this as big as I can make it without it going beyond my border now for some reason sometime when you do this it will still the measurements will come out a little beyond what they're supposed to be as far as um, the print and cut parameters so I'm going to choose all that excuse our messages we're trying to get our Christmas plans together for a family trip to Big Bear so my niece is sending me Airbnbs for me to look at while we decide where we're gonna stay um, so excuse those because I have to keep them coming because they're, they're going fast all right so now I have uh, my puppy where I want it I have the whole thing chosen and I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit it's on 20.27.75 I'm just gonna take it down to 27 even just to try to make sure I stay within the parameters because for some reason um, I don't know if anybody else experiences this but sometimes I'll put in a measurement and then when I go back to that measurement it's changed to something that's you know close but not the same so I want to make sure that I don't have any trouble when it's time to cut so now I'm going to tap on my little puppy so that I don't have the whole picture chosen because you know you can only slice two images at a time so I'm, I'm making sure that I just have the puppy separate and I don't have all the nine pieces grouped like I had just a second ago when I resize now I'm just gonna slide in from the bottom go to actions hit slice I'm gonna slide in from the middle hit slice and I'll slide in from the top and hit slice now I'm going to group these pieces by grabbing them by sliding across them all and I'm going to move this off to the side for now and I'm going to do the same thing here now I don't know what this is all about <laughs> because that uh, it shouldn't be there so I'm going to leave it for now and I think I'm going to go in from this side so I'm going to slide in grab those two pieces hit slice and slide in again hit slice slide in one more time and hit slice so now these three pieces should be all set so I'm gonna move those off to the side 
Now I'm trying to figure out what this is because it should not be there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. I'm going to move this for a second so I can see. Okay, it's looking like it's coming off of my little piece. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to uh, hit undo one time. And then I'm going to slide across this piece and slice it and see what happens because it shouldn't it shouldn't have that extra piece there so I'm gonna have to do a workaround on that if that happens to you you'll find out how to fix it so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this piece leave this piece over here now now see now it came out correctly so that's just a glitch evidently I'm gonna do the back arrow just so I can get everything lined back up and I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting those pieces out because I have no idea what Cricut is doing right there. I haven't seen that before. So now I'm going to take my little piece of the puppy, put it over there. That one is also cut correctly now. This one, is that's the back piece, but this was cut correctly. So I'm going to move those all over there and then I'm just going to get rid of all of these pieces. realign these so that I can make sure my image is cut correctly and I'm going to pull these pieces over make sure that there's no extra on there line that one up because that is not supposed to happen that is a, a glitch in Cricut and I'm going to delete sorry about hitting the camera I'm going to delete all those and I'm going to move this over some and I'm going to grab these pieces hopefully that glitch is not going to affect me when it's time to do my uh, prints all right so now I have all my pieces they look as if they're cut correctly even though it had that little weird section there for some strange reason so now I'm going to go ahead and hit make it and when I hit make it that's showing me that it's successful I'll have my cuts so that everything can be printed out and then run through the Cricut for cutting because there are several pieces it's, it takes a little bit longer maybe so now you'll see how the pieces will be cut I'm going to go ahead and load my mats and cut my pieces and then I'll be back to show you how to assemble it. As you can see, <laughs> the puppy is pretty much all put together. I had started recording the assembly and for some reason the recording stopped and I didn't realize it until after I had completed it. So I took a couple of pieces apart so that I could show you how I put it together. And how I put it together is using this light board. It's called the Bright Pad from Cricut. You don't have to use a Bright Pad. You can use any tablet even take it to a white page turn the, the light all the way up and all you do is lay your pieces on top so that you can see through it and I just use regular invisible tape to join them together so you would just get them lined up you're gonna press them pressing both edges against each other as hard as you can without making them fold up so that you get the seam to, to disappear as much as possible. These are my fingers, as you can see, I'm applying a pretty, pretty good amount of pressure to keep them in place. And then I'm just going to put a piece of tape down the entire seam. And this is how I did the entire piece that you're seeing already assembled I was doing the whole thing on camera like I said but for some reason the camera turned itself off and so 
now I'm just pushing these pieces together so that the seam will be almost invisible. And now all I need to do is add this section and because they're all straight edges, it's completely easy to put together. And it only takes, it might take 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes at the most for a project this size. It really doesn't take long to do this at all. So I'm just gonna finish this portion out and then I'll turn it over so you can see the whole finished product. If for some reason um, you feel like you, oops, I gotta turn this the right way. If for some reason, uh, because the, the recording stopped, you feel like you really need to see the whole process, um, just leave me a comment and I'm sure I'll be making some of these in the future because uh, they're pretty popular because they look good as your decoration on the wall instead of uh, some people getting the big 8x8 eight eight banners or the long banners where you have to add in the curtain and the whole scene. Um, I get orders for these character banners a lot. And I actually kind of like making them. They're not because they're not hard at all to make. And I just make sure that I cover every portion of the seam. And now I'll move my light board out the way and I'll show you the full finished look. Hopefully I'm still recording. And that's how the finished item looks. Now let me pull out my ruler and get you some measurements. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you'd like the software that I used at the beginning of this project, Microsoft Picture It, all you have to do is contact me at Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. I also have a couple of other rooms that start with Harriet's Custom. Um, I have one for templates and more and another one called Quick Assist. So if you contact me on any of those, I can uh, send you the software, a link, a free link to download the software and use it for completely free so that you can follow along with me as I design and do um, other projects in the future or watch some of the tutorials that I already have posted. Thank you again for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Thank you for stopping by Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. Please don't forget to leave a like and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified as soon as I have new videos posted, just hit the bell and you'll be notified.